So the liturgical year is winding up and we hear readings about the end times uh, every time this year. And then it's capped off by the great feast of Christ the King. That's the exclamation point on the liturgical calendar. And then we begin again with Advent. The cycle continues. Uh, <clears throat> so this is a tricky passage. Uh, this is uh, what we call the Olivet Discourse, eschatological discourse, found in all three synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And it's like perhaps the hardest uh, passage uh, chapter to interpret. Uh, it's very tricky when you start talking in this mystical, apocalyptic manner. Sometimes it sounds like he's talking about the destruction of the temple, and then it sounds like he's talking about the end of the world, and there's a lot of uh, tricky things in here we can't get into right now. I just want to make a simple point. Our Lord says heaven and earth will pass away. That's a true statement. Uh, <clears throat> scientifically, it's true. The Bible told us that... Uh, now we know scientifically we got fancy ways to describe that. We call it the uh, law of entropy. You know, the second law of thermodynamics, okay? Everything uh, go, is going from a more ordered to a more disordered state. Didn't anybody take, raise your hand if you took a introduction to physics class, okay? Notice my hand didn't go up. I don't really know what I'm talking about, but it sounds smart to say the second law of thermodynamics, okay? Sounds cool. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not that complicated. It, 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 it's just kind of, to put it in simple terms, I remember my seminary rector, one, one of my seminary rectors just said, you know, everything peaks and then it poops. All right, so everything's slowly wearing out. Uh, the energy in the universe is eventually going to give out. So we heard from uh, the letter to the Hebrews, <clears throat> and uh, Hebrews cites Psalm 102 at the beginning, which is uh, says that very thing. They will perish. The heavens are the work of thy hands, and thou didst found the earth in the beginning. But they will perish, but you remain. They will all grow old like a garment. Like a mantle, you will roll them up and they will be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years will never end. And at the end of Hebrews, our Lord Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Uh, so God is like unchanging. It's an awesome thing to think about. Uh, it's not subject to change at all. Um, but this world is uh, slowly wearing out like a garment. Um, so look, our inheritance is not here. You uh, grab on to this down here and it's like uh, it just slips through your fingers. Uh, everything here is subject to futility, St. Paul says. Or it's just subject to corruption however you want to put it. Um, but we have an inheritance awaiting us in heaven. Uh, <clears throat> that's what we need to set our sights on here, an eternal inheritance. And the chapter before today's reading in Hebrews says, he is the mediator of a new covenant so that those who are called may receive the promised eternal inheritance. St. <clears throat> Peter talks about this too. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By his great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and to an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, unfading, kept in heaven for you. That's what we want. We want something that's going to last forever. And everything we hold on to down here. Yeah. Womp, womp, womp. All right. We want ding, 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 ding for all eternity. Uh, but down here, it's womp, womp, womp. All right. And uh, 
So if you get nothing else out of this homily, remember that. <laughs> ding, 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 knock, womp, womp, womp. All right. And <clears throat> so there's tons of hope for us uh, that uh, we have something undefiled, unfading in heaven uh, kept for us there. That's our inheritance. Such an interesting word, inheritance. Uh, it's related to the word cleric, believe it or not. Uh, the word cleric. I'm the only cleric in here, I think. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and so I wear the black shirt with the little white thing stuck up in there. And <clears throat> But uh, clerics, the word cleric comes from this word kleros in Greek, okay, which means inheritance. Um, and it's really related to the Levites uh, when they finally got to the Holy Land. You know, they were like distributing parceling out the Holy Land and then, you know, drawing lots to see who goes where and gets what piece of the land. And then it came to the tribe of Levi. And it says the Levitical priests, that is, all the tribe of Levi, shall have no portion or inheritance with Israel. They shall have no inheritance amongst their brethren. Why? Because the Lord is their inheritance, Moses says. The Lord is their inheritance. That is what we really want, is God, the Father of lights, who is not subject to change uh, whatsoever. Um, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. He's eternally ding, 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 okay? And... <clears throat> So today's psalm is a very important psalm in speaking of corruption and the resurrection. So it's cited in the New Testament, most notably in the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. St. Peter cites Psalm 16 in his uh, Pentecost sermon, uh, relating it to our Lord's resurrection. Incredibly beautiful psalm. Read the whole thing to get the spirit of it. Oh, I have no good apart from thee. Thou art my Lord. I have no good apart from thee. Uh, this is really a description of the Messiah is one way you could read this psalm. Uh, but also all of us. All of us. And... Notice what it says, and we heard today uh, <clears throat> from verse 5. The Lord is my chosen portion and my cup. Um, we want the Lord. I have no good apart from the Lord down here, ultimately. Um, we want the Lord. He is our chosen portion and cup. Thou holdest my lot. The lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Yea, I have a goodly heritage. Okay, the word is kleros there. You know, my chosen portion. Um, <clears throat> and cup. Thou holdest my lot. Um, the Lord. Ultimately, all of us um, are clerics in a certain sense, you know, called to be uh, kleros, uh, to receive the Lord as our kleros. We're all priests. In this new covenant, St. Peter says that it's um, we're all somehow partakers in this priesthood of Christ. Priesthood of all believers. To be a holy priesthood, to offer spiritual sacrifices. All of us share in the priesthood of Christ. Granted, uh, ordained clergy. Uh, sharing it in a different way than the laity. But all of us are partakers in this priesthood, a superior priesthood. And we have an inheritance. Um, but it isn't some little patch of ground down here in the Near East or anywhere else on this planet. Um, it's ultimately in heaven. Hence, the psalm ends here with this reference to the resurrection. That's how it's interpreted in the New Testament, applied to the resurrection. Therefore, my heart is glad, my soul rejoices, my body also dwells secure. 
For thou dost not give me up to Sheol, or let thy godly one see corruption. Our Lord uh, is our chosen portion and cup. Same yesterday, today, and forever. We have no good apart from him. To cling to him is to be um, preserved from corruption, share in his resurrection, and to live forever in eternal glory. Uh, that ultimately is our inheritance.